Denmark player Christian Eriksen collapsed on Saturday in a game against Finland. He went into cardiac arrest. Um, it was a very uh, emotional scene. He wasn't moving. The players were worried. Players from the other teams were worried. The referees immediately called in the um, the medical officials. Um, Eriksen, who was 29 years old, was taken to a hospital in Copenhagen after he collapsed on the pitch in the 43rd minute. He had just played a short pass when he fell face down on the ground and he was given medical attention, as I said, for 10 minutes. Um, he eventually was carted off the field uh, to a loud ovation, which was nice to see. UEFA sh announced shortly after that game that it, the game had been suspended and it was going to be resumed later that Saturday. It resulted in a 1-0 victory for Finland, but the score really doesn't matter when you really think about what's at stake here. Uh, Denmark's players, on the other hand, expressed dissatisfaction at the position they were put in after teammate Christian Eriksen's collapse um, during the Euro 2020 opener on Saturday, having to decide whether to finish the match that evening or the next morning. UEFA apparently offered these players uh, in the who were gathered in the dressing room right after they had witnessed Eriksen being treated and passing out. They were offered right then and there the choice of resuming the match Saturday night or beginning again on Sunday at noon. One player from Denmark said, We were put in a position which I personally don't think we should have been put in. It probably required that someone above us had said that it was not the time to make the decision. Maybe should maybe we should have waited for the next day. So there's a lot to unpack there. First of all, you know, it, we want to note that Christian Eriksen is doing better. He is in stable condition after suffering cardiac arrest in in that match. Um, we wish him the we wish him the best and a full recovery, hopefully. Um, and now we get to the question about you know the decision to one stop the game and then resume it. So the decision to stop the game, I think, is almost universally agreed, people universally agreed that the decision to stop the game was not only necessary, but it was the right thing to do. You had to stop the game at that point because a player had just gone into cardiac arrest. You could see visibly this was not just another injury. You know, a, a lot of times players go down with like, you know, you know, torn muscles or, or you know, ankle sprains, whatever, right? Uh, these, these small injuries where they're still conscious, where they're still cognitive um, and and awake and when that happens you know yeah you can carry them away because those are less serious than situations like these where the player is not responsive the player is unconscious and where you can see that possibly his heart had stopped you know he went to cardiac arrest we don't know the details of that specifically yet but regardless you know this was a serious situation so stopping the match in general was a the right thing to do one thing they should should not have done is made the players go out and play, not knowing what the condition was of their teammate, not knowing whether he had possibly died, which in this situation, knowing what we know now was very well, possibly could have been the case if someone didn't administer CPR right away. Cause reports are that he was apparently gone before they administered CPR. So stopping the game was obviously the right decision. And then we get into the decision of bringing the mat, resuming the match and bring the players back. What that Danish player said was that right there, right then and there in the locker room after this has happened, they were told you can either resume the match later today or tomorrow. So immediately the priority apparently coming from UEFA, coming from the officials was, okay, this was terrible, but we got to resume the match. And if you were a player for Denmark or if you're someone who, who you know, has you know, um, empathy for Denmark. It's very easy to see why, you know, you would be aggravated by this or insulted because we just witnessed someone going to cardiac arrest on the field. We just witnessed some, uh, something horrific. And the first thing that they get, the first uh, piece of communication they get from UEFA is, okay, we're, when are we restarting the match? And, you know, he said that they probably should have waited a day or made that decision later. And I agree with that. I 100% agree, I agree with that. I know it's a business. I know that, you know, there's TV sponsorships and TV partnerships and deals that, that need to be sorted out and scheduling conflicts that might need to be sorted out, right? That's all well and good. But 
for UEFA officials to go into the locker room right after this happened and ask the players, when are you guys ready to play? It's beyond insulting. It's quite frankly, it's it's borderline just just sociopathic. And it really, I think, digs into a side of sports that we don't see. Because we as fans are conditioned to seeing players break their legs, break bones, and then get carted off the field, and then other players just going back and playing like it's, it's you know, nothing big happened. We are conditioned to that because we are separated. You know, there's a degree of separation, whether, even when we're at the stadium, even when we're watching on TV, there's a degree of separation. We don't know these players personally. But if you're a teammate and you see your teammate break their leg, or you see a teammate, you know, pass out in the way that Christian Erickson did, your mind is going to be completely warped by what you've just seen. Imagine if you were just, you're just playing a pickup game with your friends. And pickup game of basketball, soccer, football, whatever. You're playing a game with your friends, and then suddenly someone breaks their leg. One of your friends, you see them in pain, writhing on the floor with a broken leg. Your first response isn't going to be, okay, let's get them carted off and then, like, let's see what, uh, you know, when we can resume the game. No. Your first response is going to be, oh, my God, oh, my God, let's get him some help. And while I agree, you know, there are situations that you can't, you can't stop the game for every injury. And I'm, that's not what I'm advocating for. But I'm trying to, you know, kind of build a, a, an idea of what it's like for these players when they see things like this happen. And, you know, at the end of the day, if the player is, is conscious, it, I, I do think that you continue with the match because, you know, you, one thing you don't want to have happen is someone having cardiac arrest potentially and then, you know, the worst happening and then you continue the match. That's not something you want to have happen. And, you know, not knowing what his condition was, not knowing what was going on um, right after he had collapsed, I do think, you know, played into the fact that it was right for them to stop the game. But resuming the game, man, you have to wait. You have to wait. You have to give the players time to process what they've just seen. You have to give the players time to process the fact that their friend just had a heart attack on the field, collapsed in the field, was unconscious, was gone. You got to give them time to process that because... At the end of the day, we, we like to, you know, we love to, to, to talk about the spectacle of sports and all that. At the end of the day, these are just people. Just like us. At the end of the day, they are just people. And I think that they're within their right to process these things and, you know, in whatever manner they see fit. Thanks for watching this video from Real Take Sports Talk. Remember to like, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you get notified whenever a new video is released. Also remember to check out our live show every single Thursday at 8 p.m. right here on the YouTube channel. And remember, keep it real.